Hi everybody, this is my first official video and the topic for today is parenting styles. So I'm gonna talk about three different styles and flesh them out for you a little bit and then we will talk more about them during class. And uh, hopefully I will figure out how to upload this onto the Google Classroom. So here we go. The first type of parenting style I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna use a, an object here to help describe this parenting style. And as you can see, I have a very hard object. It's got really rough edges. Um, it's solid, it does not bend, it's not flexible, very heavy. So this type of parenting is called authoritarian. Authoritarian. So it would be described as very firm, um, not a lot of flexibility at all. Uh, the parent is very much in charge and runs the show. So there's not a lot of input from outside. Um, there's not a lot of conversation. The children don't have a lot of uh, input or part of problem solving. The parent is very much in the leadership role. Um, so this type of parent might sound like, um, say things like my way or the highway, or because I said so, um, or use a lot of now, you need to do it now because I said so, go get it done. This isn't up for discussion. Um, you know, if you want to cry, go into your room to cry. Um, so there's a lot of focus on um, uh, obedience is what I want to say. So that looks like well-behaved kids are obedient kids. They follow what the parent wants them to do. So if you think about this, perhaps, what might motivate a parent to choose this parenting style? Um, it's oftentimes rooted in a fear of lack of control. I don't really know what's going to happen if I allow kids to actually have a thought or opinion. I actually don't want to take the time to deal with the messiness, I call it, the messiness of life, which is I might have to stop for a minute, take some time to process for a minute, listen to this other perspective for a minute. Um, it makes it longer and I don't have the time or the patience. I don't want to deal with it. You should just do what I say. This is silly that I would listen to a, a three-year-old is, is the mindset. So there's this fear of um, an, an avoidance of hard work. Um, I just want it done. Uh, but what they often don't realize is in their effort to parent well and make sure that the child is kept safe and, and um, sometimes this type of parenting style can be like very, very overly protective or a helicopter type of parent, that in their efforts to parent well, that they actually create distance between them and their children. Um, so if you think about over time, if you were raised in a household like this, common things that happen are the kids don't seek the parent out. They don't see them as a source of support. So they do things like get very sneaky. Um, they're going to lie. They're never going to want to be caught or in trouble. They do not want to come to you if um, they are in trouble or struggling or feeling pressured by friends to do things, drugs. Um, they are worried about sex, being and pregnant, you know, and they're not going to seek you out. Um, so they will seek out friends or people that are maybe not in their best interest to seek out. And oftentimes these kids, they can't wait to get out of the house. They bail um, as soon as they can. Um, and then sometimes what happens is then they're not really used to setting their own boundaries and they're off at college or in their wherever they go to a new apartment or whatever, and they are not the best about boundaries. They kind of go a little bit crazy because they haven't had the opportunity to create their own boundaries. Are just some possibilities that um, are classically unfold when you're raised in this type of household. I have another object. Here we go. So this object, as you can see, is very squishy. It's very flexible. It's kind of fun, kind of crazy. Um, and you can push on it and push on it and push on it. And there's not a lot of pushback. So uh, I call this parenting style permissive or a simple word is noodle. So we have brick and noodle. Uh, so uh, noodle parenting is an emphasis on kindness, whereas the brick was emphasis on firmness. So kindness means that you're aware that you're in a relationship with another human being. You're aware that children have self-esteem and that you have the ability to harm them, those self-esteem. So these parents may overthink it too much. They may have a very, very soft voice, um, a voice that makes children think that they're in charge. 
such as, oh, honey, you know, it's really not okay to hit our friends. It just, it just hurts. Yeah, you know, so there, there is not a lot of authority in the voice. They also may ask permission from the children. Is it okay if I go now? Do you feel okay? I'm going to go now. Is that okay? Um, so they're asking the child when they shouldn't be asking the child something. So there, there's a lot of okay on the end of their sentences. They also may sound very firm, like pick up your toys. It's pick, pick up your toys. It's time to pick up your toys. I'm not going to tell you again. You need to pick up your toys if you want to go do anything else. Pick up your toys. So on and on and on they go times 20. So these parents often think that they're being very firm, but they lack action and they're all talk. And so the child knows, you know, talk, talk, talk doesn't really mean anything. Um, so these parents, I think perhaps, um, also fear messiness. Um, I don't want to have to deal with the tantrum. And, and then I also feel bad and I feel guilty. And then I'm responsible for my child being happy. And it's hard for me to have my child be unhappy. Um, and don't realize that there's a difference between having your child unhappy from a child working through a struggle and succeeding and getting to the other side and feeling successful, that I was able to say goodbye to my mom and I worked it through and look at me. Um, or that, um, you know, I was able to climb higher on that climber and even though I was kind of scared and fearful, you didn't run in and save me. You actually supported me going higher. Um, so um, the kids growing up in this type of home might um, feel that they're in charge. And so sometimes you might see entitlement. They don't um, think about other people's feelings sometimes. Um, they can mistreat their parents because they feel like they're in charge and are um, not really aware of the whole picture <clears throat> and other people's needs. Um, they may not launch off into the world. They may say, this is great. My parents pay for my my car insurance and <clears throat> uh, my mom does my laundry. <coughs> so why should I launch? I kind of like it here. Could be one possible thing that plays out. Or sometimes kids become the adult because the parent, in a more of an extreme situation, if the parent isn't really owning their parentship role, then the child will start to like, okay, we need to like get these lunches made and is anybody watching my younger siblings? You know, they start to parent when they shouldn't parent. Um, so let's talk about a combination of these two. So the best of the brick. What is the great things about a brick parent? Boundaries and structure. And it creates a sense of safety for kids that somebody's in charge and is looking after me. And there's a schedule. <clears throat> oh, I'm getting a tickle in my throat. No fair. <coughs> and the best of the noodle parent is that they are aware of being kind and that children um, are humans and have feelings and needs. So let's combine them together and we get this, clay. So it's flexible, but it's not completely flexible. There's still pushback. Um, and it can be very creative and, and sh shaped into many different things. Um, and it can be fun, um, but it can be solid too. So we want to bring together the best of both of those things. So a clay parent's voice is confident. Uh, it doesn't go up at the end like, can I go? Is it okay? You know, it's like, I'm going now, period. And, the, and we stop talking and your voice goes down. These parents ask questions and they walk into a situation and they might say, what's going on? What's happening? I see that you're both really yelling. Um, I'm here to help. Um, what do we need to do to solve this? Um, uh, what are some other questions? I have some written down here. These types of parents ask, um, what do you need to, what do you need to clean this up with? Is, can I get you anything? Do you need a broom? Uh, what's your plan about getting this cleaned up? Or what is your plan about getting your pajamas on? Um, are we reading books tonight? Because if we are, we got to get those pajamas on so we have time. You know. So you're, you're thoughtful with your questions and conversation. You're not afraid of the messiness of life. You're not afraid of the tougher conversations. You're not afraid of the meltdown. Um, you're not afraid to take a little bit more time. You can't do it every single time, obviously. But uh, you know some of the time, you're willing to, like, let me hear what you think. Um, and there are times where you're just like, 
we're going to the doctor and there's no more time and there's no more delay and we're getting in the car and I love you. Uh, so there's a sense of love and firmness mixed together. And sometimes you have to be a little bit more firm and sometimes a little bit more softer. But in the end, you're always working on combining the both of them. Some other attributes of this type of parent are that they um, say what they mean and mean what they say and they follow through. They don't repeat over and over, you need to clean up, you need to clean up. They might say it once and then they take action. They focus on what they are going to do rather than what they're going to make you do or you know anybody else in their life, not just kids. Um, they take breaks when they're really upset, cool off, take a breath, step outside, get a glass of water, regroup, come back, um, begin again, and make a decision. Okay, I've decided I'm going to X, Y, Z. Um, they um, seek solutions. They're not into blame or shame. Um, they avoid punishment and rewards. And they let natural consequences take their course, knowing that life is the best teacher. They don't take their children's behavior personally. They adjust their role. They know that as a child grows and develops, you need to grow and change as, an, as their parent as well. So in the beginning, you're micromanaging everything about your infant. But then as your child grows and becomes a preschooler and a, middle, and a school age child, you're like, would you like toast or oatmeal for breakfast? Or um, do you want to wear shorts today or pants today or do you want to do your homework uh at uh, 3 30 or at 4 um you know and so you're allowing some choice over their life but you're still very much managing their life then they get to middle school and high school years and you're you've stepped back even more and now you're coaching you're not managing every little thing like every day if they've changed their underwear or things like that um you're still very present and and offering advice but they go off into their world and to high school and with their friends and they make choices with you not around so it's it's different if you're trying to control it you will get a lot of pushback um and then eventually when they graduate and they're adults, you're just a cheerleader, cheering them on, whatever choices they decide to make. Um, and it might be like, oh, you want to go backpacking in Europe? Well, well cool. I wonder, how, what's your plan? How are you going to fund that? You know, um, Just cheer them on, whatever they decide that they're, they're going to do. Um, they also understand that being a model for their children is more important than what you say. So what you do is more important than what you say. Um, and that self-care is, is built into their lives. So they have friends, they have a, a resources, they have somebody to offload to rather than offload onto their kids. They have a hobby or two um, to just you know give a break from their parenting role. Um, and they're emotionally honest and transparent. So what they say and the, the, what's on their face and their feeling all match. So it's confusing if you say things like, no, I'm fine. No, it's fine. Fine. Just go to your room. I'm fine. It's very confusing for a child when you say, you know, I'm, I'm a little upset. I'm a little frustrated. I'm going to work through it. I'm going to take some breaths here. Um, and, you know, so your, your face, your emotions match. It's a really important thing. All right. So those are the three almost. Oh, it says my battery's low. I wonder if that'll show up on the video. <laughs> so these are the three parenting styles. Brick, noodle, clay. And some kids need you to be more brick-like just because of their personality. Some of you need, some kids are fine if you're a little looser. Um, so you, don't, you have to just kind of know your kid, know where you need to be. My son needed me more brick-like. He would say, well, what's going to happen to me if I don't do that? He was like calling me out to be firmer. Um, uh, and I'm going to talk more about it in class and we'll act out some scenes so we can practice um, being a brick clay and a noodle. And I have some questions on the Google Classroom about these parenting styles. All right. Ta-da! I've made my first video. Yay! The end. <laughs>